On behalf of all the saints of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Livonia, I welcome you to worship. We have faith that the risen Christ encounters us in word and sacrament, granting God's mercy and grace to all who seek it. May our time of praise and prayer, scripture and song, be a blessing to you in your spiritual journey. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from life to death, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Word of God, word of life. Okay. Uh, a reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Creator, from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, the breath of life. Can you imagine being given a nickname that will follow you for thousands of years based on one moment of your life, one single weak or embarrassing moment? I have to admit that I feel quite defensive of the Apostle Thomas every year when this text comes up. To be known primarily as Doubting Thomas because of one day in all his time as a disciple of Jesus just never seems very fair to me. We don't call Peter denying Peter, despite the way he lied about knowing Jesus after his arrest. So why is it that Thomas has to be doomed to this nickname, forever remembered with an attitude of judgment for simply yearning to see and experience what all the other disciples already had? Some of the reason that this nickname has stuck around for so long might simply be because this story is by far the most detailed account that we have in the scriptures of who this Thomas person is. In Matthew and Mark and Luke, Thomas is only mentioned one time in each of those gospels in the middle of a list of the apostles. He doesn't speak, he doesn't act, for those writers, he seems to have been remembered as one of the quiet apostles who simply hung out in the background. Perhaps Thomas was an empathetic listener. Perhaps he was detail-oriented and good at taking care of the logistical concerns for the group, things like finding food and shelter for everyone. Faithful and supportive, certainly, but ultimately his gifts, whatever they were, don't seem to have brought him to the forefront of the story like some of the others, such as Simon Peter or Judas. John, the gospel writer, however, seems to have a very different idea about how to tell the tale of Thomas. John lets Thomas speak. 
John gives him this extra name. It tells us that he was called the twin. And in John's gospel, this story of Thomas's reaction in the days and weeks immediately following the resurrection is so important that we read it every single year on the Sunday after Easter. John clearly knows that even the quiet followers, the people in the background, have rich stories and experiences to share. There are still things that we are left to wonder, of course. We don't know exactly why Thomas was called the twin, beyond the possible explanation that he was literally a twin. But when I read about who Thomas is in the Gospel of John, I see a picture of a person who was of two minds. He felt deeply called to follow Jesus wherever that journey may lead. And yet he was also deeply puzzled about the mystery that he was daily encountering in this ministry. The strangeness of this community that God had pulled him into to be a part of. This incarnation of God's love and grace that Thomas could know and talk to and touch. The first time Thomas speaks back in the 11th chapter of John, it is to encourage his fellow disciples to accompany Jesus no matter where he takes them, even if it results in danger or death for them. Their group has been bickering about returning to Judea, where they expect to face some persecution and violence. They wonder whether the recent illness of their friend Lazarus is a good enough reason to risk traveling to see him. But Thomas has bold words for them, saying, Let us also go, that we may die with him. It was a profound confession of solidarity and faith. But by the time the evening of the Last Supper rolled around, that final meal that Jesus would share with his friends, Thomas's next appearance shows more confusion and hesitation this time. Jesus tried to explain that even though he's going to leave them, he will be back. And Thomas protested at his inability to follow Jesus. Lord, he said, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Is it a complaint? Is it a request for more specific instructions? We don't know. And we don't know why, when we come to the evening of the first Easter, when the disciples have locked themselves up in a, a hidden room out of fear, Thomas wasn't with them. We can probably assume that it wasn't a, a frivolous, meaningless reason to risk a situation that has everyone else in the grips of such paralyzing fear. But beyond that, the reason for his separation from the community simply isn't told to us. He showed himself at one point, after all, of being unafraid of facing death. Maybe Thomas simply had more courage than the other disciples and refused to hide with them desiring to continue the ministry they had been doing. Or, on the other hand, maybe he was so stricken by Jesus' arrest and execution that he had given up on their ministry. We don't know. Whatever the explanation, it almost certainly wasn't an accident that he missed that first meeting. In the chaos and conflict of those early days after the crucifixion, something brought Thomas into conflict with the people who had been his very closest friends. Fear had overtaken the hearts of some, and skepticism was dominating others. And still, the message and gift to all of them that Jesus brought was the same. Jesus cannot be held back by whatever doors or walls the disciples have locked themselves behind. Christ finds a way to enter into their lives and announce that peace will be with them. The poet Maya Angelou, just about a year before her death, wrote that love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, and penetrates walls. 
to arrive at its destination full of hope. That sounds like Jesus to me. He offers everyone the chance to see his body and the marks he carries from the violence that he has suffered. It moves me that in that gap, that week between Jesus' two appearances, the, the other disciples have clearly reached out to Thomas. They shared their story and told him that they have seen the Lord. And despite whatever fear or doubt may be lingering in everyone, there is also still a desire to be a whole community together, to gather in all their weakness, in all their differentness, and encounter Jesus. One commentator on this passage wrote that whatever else it might be, this is a picture of resurrection community. All kinds of different, distinctive, and diverse people bound together in the promise of resurrection in a way that the whole is larger than the sum of the parts. And of course, moving through his doubt and his need for evidence, his longing for an experience of Jesus to uphold his belief, dear Thomas is the one that ends up making the strongest proclamation that any of the disciples manage. They have all called him Lord even before now. It was a title of respect and status, but an earthly title all the same that many leaders would have been known by. For Thomas to call Jesus my God would have been nothing less than blasphemy for a faithful Jewish person of the time or now. It's no wonder he wanted to be certain and yet offered the same experience that all the other disciples are given. Thomas somehow sees who Jesus is even more clearly than they do. The picture John paints of this conflicted, frightened, diverse group of resurrection people is perhaps not so different from the community that we as a congregation, a church, a world are called to be. We are all at different points in our faith journeys. We disagree probably about many things. And we're all trying to see and experience Jesus in a world that tells us he should be dead and irrelevant. We are called, though, to keep reaching out to one another while the Holy Spirit is breathed into our lives and Christ overcomes whatever obstacles we have constructed to try to keep him away. We continue searching for that experience that will overtake us with mystery and surprise and joy, the experience that will make us proclaim, my Lord and my God. May Thomas be a model of persistence and boldness for us along our way, reminding us also to long for encounters with the risen Jesus. Thanks be to God for a resurrected Christ who penetrates walls, leaps fences, and overcomes any hurdle to greet us. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessings of life forevermore, like dew upon the mountains. Refresh your creation, Restore the waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O oh God. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the way of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we, that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joys may be complete. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with others in your household or with others who are gathered here for worship.
now is the time in our service when we will collect our tithes and offerings. As you and your family are able, please do continue to regularly give your offering to support our ministries at Holy Trinity. You may mail a check to the church office at the address on the screen or follow the instructions on our website to make an electronic offering. In song and prayer, let us praise the generosity of God that makes our generosity possible. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite everyone to ready the elements that you have gathered for Holy Communion as we offer to God our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all her creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. <laughs> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to the table. Come eat and be satisfied. If you are worshiping with others from your household, I encourage you to offer communion to one another. As you partake of the bread of life, hear this promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. As you partake of the cup of salvation, hear this promise. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are not partaking this morning for any reason, please receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and all your days. Amen. <laughs> Wellspring of joy, 
Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us a joyful wellness that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. I want to um, let everyone know that following our worship service today, we are not going to have Fellowship of Faith. <clears throat> we will begin Fellowship of Faith again um, on the 18th, we will have a congregational meeting and Debbie will talk about that in a second. And then the following week, April 25th, is when we will be starting a book study led by Amy Morse. And um, the book is Elijah. And, if, and the information is in the announcements, the printed announcements, if you would like to order your own or if you would like me to order that for you, you need to let me know by next Friday. Debbie, other announcements? Yes, lots of announcements. Um, as Dale mentioned, there is a congregation meeting next Sunday after worship. Um, all of you that are on Zoom this morning, I expect you to attend it by Zoom. Those that um, do not do Zoom can come and gather in the um, sanctuary to participate in the meeting, um, but please call and reserve your spot so that we know how many are going to participate that week. There are also going to be several meet and greet sessions for you to meet the pastoral candidate. Um, I didn't mention that the purpose of the congregation meeting is to vote on the new pastor, the candidate for a new pastor as to serve as senior pastor at Holy Trinity. Um, you will have several opportunities to meet that new pastor to chat chat with that um, candidate. Um, there's one on Thursday at 7.30 p.m., one on Friday at 6 p.m., and one on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Those, again, will be by Zoom. Same um, work, uh, ID as we use for Sunday morning worship. Again, there's the opportunity to gather in the sanctuary if you don't do Zoom. Um, I would like you to call the office and reserve your spot for a session, whether you are re attending by Zoom or in person, just because we need to limit the number of people at each session so that everybody has a chance to participate and ask questions if they would like. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I may be able to release more information about the candidate later this week. Um, the reason that information has not been released is the candidate has not let um, his home congregation know um, that he is in a call process that's happening this week. Um, so we don't want information to get back to the congregate, home congregation before um, he's ready to do that. Um, the other thing that I have is there is going to be a Senate Assembly. Last year, um, there was no Senate Assembly. They are going to have a Senate Assembly this year. It's going to be on May 15th. It's going to be um, by Zoom, so virtual. If anybody would like to be a representative, I need a male and a female representative from Holy Trinity. Please let me know this week. The registration deadline for Senate Assembly is April 23rd. I would like, we need to have one male and one female representative at that meeting. Um, and I think that's all that I have. Michelle, did you want to speak about the Bible study? Okay. 
Yes, the women's Bible study will begin this Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. It's The link is in the announcements, but I'm going to ask Dale to send out an email blast probably tomorrow, and the link will be attached to that. So I hope you can join us for studying the book of James. We are a welcoming community of believers in Jesus Christ who witness our faith by serving together, praying together, and living generously together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. God.